Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to highlight three Blue Ocean spec books, specifically spec books that are not found in Key Collector app. And you guys know, if you've been paying attention to my channel for any length of time, I am a huge fan of Key Collector app. I literally use this thing almost every day to identify the significance of comics that are in my collection. But the thing is, not every comic that is out there that has some significance can be found in Key Collector app. Hence, this series in which we try to identify those blue ocean books, those books that are not on people's radar because they're not found in the app. And this is not an easy thing to do, but my partner and I, Doug, do a pretty good job of identifying these books and trying to create these videos to bring this content to you every single month. Now, it's important to remember that we are not saying go out and buy these books. We are saying, hey, here are some cool books that have some significance that are under the radar that you might want to think about. Maybe they're already in your collection. Maybe you can find them in a dollar bin. Maybe you can pick them up for a couple of bucks. But these are not necessarily the books that are suddenly going to spike in value next week, but they might have some potential. Above all else, it is important to not substitute our judgment for your judgment. You have to look at these books, you have to listen to the rationale, and you have to decide for yourself where you might want to take a chance because not every book, not every piece of advice is for every person. So take some time to think through it, evaluate it, noodle it before you actually pull the trigger. Now, in this video, what we are going to do is to identify three books. Two of them are Marvel books and one of them is an independent. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are huge fans of DC. And I will tell you, stay tuned because DC is going to get its opportunity very soon. With that said, these three books actually have something in common. And as I go through them, the question will be, can you identify the common theme, the commonality? I will reveal it at the end of the video, but let's see if you are paying attention and can connect the dots. With that said, let's get to the first book. Book number one is Raiders of the Lost Ark, issue number one, published by Marvel Comics in 1981. This 40-year-old Bronze Age Marvel comic is the first issue of a limited series adaption of the first Indiana Jones movie written by George Lucas, directed by Steven Spielberg, and starring Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones is an icon. There is no doubt about that. He is one of my favorite classic actors. I remember seeing this movie back in the day and I absolutely love it. I love just about everything that Harrison Ford has ever done because he is such a talented actor. Raiders of the Lost Ark features the first regular comic book appearance of Indiana Jones. And I know what you might be thinking, wasn't there a miniseries that actually came out before this comic? There was indeed, but that comic was one, a miniseries, but it was also a reprint of a magazine. So Raiders of the Lost Ark issue number one is the first regular non-reprint appearance of Indiana Jones in comics. Currently, filming is underway for the fifth feature film in the Indiana Jones franchise, slated for a July 2022 release. This movie will once again star Harrison Ford in the title role. When Disney acquired Lucasfilms in 2012, it also acquired the rights to Indiana Jones. And as a billion dollar franchise, it's not hard to see the potential here for a movie or some kind of spinoff show on the Disney Plus platform. In fact, Disney would have to be missing the, the huge money tree that is sitting before them if they did not see the opportunity to make some magic with this franchise down the road. The fact that this iconic character's first appearance in comics is still under the radar after all of these years is honestly a little mind-boggling, and the question remains, will something change down the road? Current average raw sales prices for Raiders of the Lost Ark issue number one is under $6. It's actually $5.95 if you want to be exact. The current FMV for a CGC 9.8 is $400, and this is actually up significantly, about 300% over a year ago 
when we first spoke about this comic on my show and also wrote a blog post about it for ReggieCollects.com. When you go a little bit deeper into the data, what you see is that there are less than 150 blue label copies graded at a CGC 9.8 on the census, which means that supply is relatively low. And the question will be, will there be an increase in demand should some magic happen with Disney and Disney Plus? Only time will tell. Book number two is technically a little bit of a cheat. And I say that because this entire series is about identifying blue ocean books. Those books that are under the radar that people aren't paying attention to potentially because they are not contained in Key Collector app. And technically this second book is in Key Collector app. However, it is the later prints of this book that are not in Key Collector App, and that might actually be where the opportunity exists. The book that I am specifically talking about is Bone, issue number two, published by Cartoon Books between 1991 and 1994. The various prints of this book, of specifically Bone, issue number two, and technically the other books in this title, are often identified by the color of the logo on the cover of the book as well as noted on the Indinka inside of the book. According to Key Collector App, the first print of Bone issue number two has a hot pink logo. Cover price actually includes photos of a second print, third, fourth, and fifth print of issue number two. However, we have actually identified some additional prints, specifically a sixth print that has an orange logo as well as a seventh print that features a yellow logo that may have been released around 1994. This essentially identifies that there are some later print runs that are not identified by Key Collector app. In the last couple of years, later print runs have really become attractive to a lot of people. Once upon a time, they were viewed as reprints, but a lot more folks, I think, are starting to pay attention to these later print runs, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One of those reasons is that the later print runs tend to be smaller than the early print runs, which means that they are harder to find because they're potentially harder to find, they also sometimes will have higher values. Because the print runs are also small, it also presents a challenge for some collectors who like to be completist, who want to have every copy of every print run that happens to be out there. So there's a couple of reasons why these later print runs have started to come to the forefront in the last few years. While the original Bone comics were published during the height of the 90s, when print runs were relatively large, Cartoon Books, the publisher, was at the time a small independent publisher that had not yet moved over to Image. As a result of this, they didn't necessarily have the financial resources to print large amounts of books. So even though the first print was larger than the later prints. Overall, all of the print runs are relatively small versus what you might see from a major publisher. For those that don't know, Bone is a beloved independent comic series created by Jeff Smith. It is an all ages epic genre bending fantasy that is going to be coming to Netflix at some point in the future. There was actually a series of articles that came out over the summer that indicated that Jeff Smith and his creative writing team are still in the process of actually writing the series. So there is no definitive date as to when we might actually see this series take the air on Netflix. Cover price does not list an FMV for the later printings of this issue, and very few copies, if any, of the later printings, two through seven, have actually been graded by CGC. But if you believe that this series is actually going to come out on Netflix, if you believe that it coming out on Netflix is going to prompt people to start taking a harder look at the intellectual property, the original source material, then as I mentioned, these later printings could present folks with a wonderful opportunity.
In this video, I'm going to spend some time talking about FMV, fair market value. And in the instance of this video, the fair market values have been pulled from coverprice.com. This is a reliable pricing guide that is out there. But one of the other great things about it is that it contains prices not just for graded comics, but for raw comics as well. That way we have one resource to go to to pull the FMV information. So wanted to make mention of that. The last book that we're going to talk about is Dazzler issue number six, published by Marvel Comics in 1981. And yes, this is the second Bronze Age comic that we are going to talk about. Now, what makes this book special is that in 1981, TSR, the producer of the popular Dungeons and Dragons role playing game, decided to advertise its game by publishing a series of eight one-page ads in Marvel Comics. One of the first comics to run this ad was Dazzler issue number six, meaning that this comic contains the first appearance of Dungeons and Dragons in comics. Now, it is likely that this ad appeared in some other comics as well. And Doug is doing some additional homework to try to identify some of these books, but we wanted to at least identify this one for you and flag it for those collectors out there that like to go hunting for these types of comics. And I will also make an appeal to some of you out there that may be a little more knowledgeable. Maybe you have some insight. Maybe you know other comics in which this ad has appeared. And if you do, I want to encourage you to leave those thoughts below. Now, with that said, this could be a really awesome challenge. One of the fun ways of making comics interesting is by giving yourself challenges and by trying to hunt down all the comics that contain this ad. It could be a pretty interesting thing to do. So consider it. So Dazzler is definitely one of those titles that is under the radar. Like there's not a whole lot that goes on with this series, but we thought that this was a pretty cool thing to flag for folks. And you can probably find copies of issue number six in dollar bins or even 50 cent bins for that matter. And I was lucky enough to find a couple of copies in my own collection, which allowed me to verify that this ad was indeed in there. Now you might be asking yourself, is that the only thing that makes this comic significant? Is there more to it? Technically, there is. And the more is the fact that they are doing a reboot of Dungeons and Dragons. This reboot is actually slated for a release in 2023. So there's plenty of time for some things to change and plenty of time for you to actually go out and be able to find this comic should you choose to actually pick it up. Average sales for a raw copy of Dazzler issue number six are $5.84. The FMV of a CGC 9.8 is currently sitting at $89.95. And I will tell you, I find that to be a little shocking that it's even that high. But if you can score a raw copy, you might want to take shot on goal. If you ever decide to actually get it graded, not saying that you should do that, but just throwing that out for consideration at $89 is a lot of money unless you happen to maybe be a huge Dungeons and Dragons fan, which there are a lot out there. So the big question at this point is, have you figured out what these comics have in common? The truth is they actually have a few things in common. First and foremost, they all contain first appearances of some characters and or some properties that tie back to the fantasy slash adventure genre. Second, all three of them are associated with movies, TV shows, or streaming shows that will be appearing in the next few years. And it's that last point that is probably going to propel these comics to the public eye. It is when they start making casting announcements, when there's rumors, when there's trailers coming out that prompt people to start paying attention to the source material. It's also those things that prompt these comics to get sucked into the apps and into other videos. And so if you're watching this video, if you're reading the blog post on ReggieCollects.com, you are definitely going to be ahead of the curve. With that said, I am going to ask you that if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this series and you want to see more, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind so that we can get that feedback. And that will serve as a, 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 a mechanism, as a motivation for us to continue doing this series into the future. As always, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.